Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. The Coffee and Biscotti Show. I'm your host, Crew Mel Bellissimo. Today is Friday, October the 8th, 12 o'clock EST. And I wish you guys had smell-o-vision. Do you know what smell-o-vision is? Because I'm feeling good and I'm smelling good. And I had to. I had to. I had to come correct today. Because when you see my guest, most of you are probably going to fall out of your chair because she's this radiant goddess who's going to come on here and go, oh, my God, Krumel, where did you find this woman? Yeah, well, I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed that she's in my life. And she is um, just an amazing, amazing human being. But we're going to get there. We're going to get there, my friends, nice and easy. Nice and easy, my friends. So I hope wherever you are in the world, you are doing well. I uh, hope you had a good week. Lots of interesting things on the astrology front, uh, if you're into that kind of thing. Um, lots of different energies, the energy of the new moon, and talking a little bit about how this is a time, you know, we're in the, here in the harvest month, and we talk about abundance. And of course, here in Canada, we're just about to celebrate the Thanksgiving long weekend. A time where we truly give thanks for all the things that we have in our lives. So I want to spend a moment just talking about that. That no matter how difficult things are at times or what they seem like, that you can always look back or always think about all the things that you are grateful for. You know, I, I run a team of, of leaders called the Wolf Pack. And this wolf pack is truly a bunch of amazing human beings that understand that have seen some success, but understand the value in helping others and not only what it what it does for others, but what it does for them in helping others. And I run this Muay Thai class for them Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if you're watching, hit me up if you want to join my Muay Thai class. Tuesday and Thursday, yes, you heard it, 6 a.m. EST, 6 a.m. That means that you have to have the discipline to get off your ass and come and join me at 6 a.m. The point of telling you this is just to say this, that at the end of the Muay Thai session, we talk for a moment, and I get everybody to close their eyes. So wherever you are, close your eyes for a moment. Just listen to my voice. I want you to imagine in your mind Something that you're grateful for today. Something that, no matter how difficult life is, that there's something in your life that you are truly grateful for. After my workout, we say to be grateful for sharing energy with each other. And that we're going to be grateful for the fact that when we're done our workout, we can go upstairs and open a fridge that's full of food and drink. And that you are able to move your body in a way that some people can't move it. All the things that we take for granted, we talk about at the end of a Muay Thai workout. To take this energy, this beautiful energy of love, passion, empathy, and gratefulness and to take that with you and share it with your families and your communities so that you be the pillar of support for them. And today's guest is exactly that, a pillar of support, a radiant goddess whose smile would light up a building, let alone a room. Where to start? Okay, my friends. My guest today is nothing short of an amazing human being. She has dedicated her life to helping others. She helps people transform their bodies and then appreciate them and appreciate whatever you call God gave them. And then she 
helps them with food because food is our nourishment. We get energy from food. So she helps people fill themselves with high vibrational food so that they can move closer and closer to becoming the best versions of themselves. And then what does she do on top of that? She's a mindset coach and an accountability coach. So you look at your life through a particular set of lenses. And then you speak to this woman. And she provides you some perspective on maybe that if we change the lenses that we look at our situation, that it's really not so bad. That maybe if we change the lenses in which we look at the situations we are in, that we could find joy in all that we have. And when you think about this show, and I say this every week, the coffee and biscotti show started because of a passion to share people's story of passion and transformation. Well, this, this next guest is all of that. She's dedicated her life to helping others through her passion of fitness, health, and nutrition. And then we may hear some stories of her own transformation today. I hope that wherever you are in the world that you feel this today because it's a special moment of the year, the one we call Thanksgiving. And this woman does exactly that and doesn't need a holiday to do that. She gives thanks and she gives of herself to each of her clients every single day. So ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are in the world, Please get off of your comfortable seat and put your hands together for the absolutely radiant goddess, Catherine Tanaka. And the crowd goes, wow. Oh, Mel, thank you so much for having me. And before we get into it today, I just, you know, that little gratitude moment that you shared with us was really profound. And yeah. I just want to express my gratitude to you for having me on today. And one of the beautiful things about you, Mel, is that you have an unbelievable heart of giving as well. And you showing up every single week to deliver this on Twitch, across the Twitchiverse, whatever you like to call it, is really a gift to everyone every single week, right? Because especially through a time like the pandemic, people have needed support, a listening, you know, some consistency and you have really created that with your community here. So thank you. I'm grateful. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I, it means a lot. I, I have to say, Catherine, that it's nice to hear because I had a call today at 10 o'clock just before the show. And it was a woman that I knew for many, many years, about 30 years. And she said to me today, Mel, I just want you to know people are watching. Hmm. You don't know they're watching. Because, you know, when somebody watches your video, it doesn't tell you who's watching. 100%. But people are watching. People are watching. And that's exactly why entrepreneurs like you, clarity coaches like yourself, you know, Muay Thai coaches like yourself show up every single day. Because somewhere in the periphery, that one person is watching. And if you can make that one difference per day, that in itself is worth all of it, right? 100%. And that's, that's why right. you're here, Catherine. Because the truth is, is, is that <laughs> how many people's lives have you touched that have taken your goddess energy, taken it in and gone to their families and their mm -hmm. communities and watched that ripple effect? That's what we're here. That's why you're, that's why you're this, this amazing human being. Because Anybody who's dedicated themselves, first of all, to the fitness industry and the fitness and nutrition and, and health industry, I, I give props because I know <laughs> firsthand, 25 years, Catherine, as a Muay Thai coach and crew. And somebody said to me the other day, that's a life sentence. 
25 yeah, so years is a life sentence. Years? And so time. when I look at you, when I look at you and I look at what you do, because you, you not only do coaching, but you also have this, this award-winning uh, podcast, the body, the body podcast, Pro- the body project podcast, project, yep. the body project co- podcast, you, you do so much and you as well share this energy with all those that, that are, are listening, all your fans that are listening to the show. And so here's what I want to do, because I could I could spend the next 90 minutes complimenting you about what I think <laughs> about you. And then you would be really beat red. And then it was, it was like, you don't need any makeup at all. Because we could do that, too. Like, we could do that, too. Um, but I want to do something for our friends in the Twitchyverse, mm-hmm. Catherine. And what I want to do is, for those that don't have the honor and pleasure of knowing you, like I do, I want to paint them a picture. I want them to paint them a picture of who, like, listen, and just, I was told you I was going to do this. So I'm going to embarrass you a little bit. And what I'm going to say is, listen, gentlemen, she's taken. I've tried. She's taken. She's happily married with two beautiful children. So we don't stand a chance. So we might as well forget about it. But it's just, I say this, I say this because I told you the other day when we spoke, Catherine, there was this great video. And the video was, was an X axis and a Y axis of the hotness and crazy bitch uh, scale. And that the hotter you were, the crazy you were. Well, that may be true for some. And then all of a sudden there's you who's got it all. Literally has it all. You're so sweet. So I want to paint this picture because what I do know because we know each other, is that it's not all roses. Mm -hmm. It's not all the bowl of cherries, that's for sure. So today, I want you to start off by just letting people know who Catherine really is. Yeah, thank you, Mal. Thank you for that intro and this welcoming. So who I am today is a powerful, fierce mother who is also a hustler entrepreneur in the realm of fitness, where I run a fitness studio, where I train clients one-on-one, where I run an online transformation program, and where I have a podcast where I interview some of the top fitness and movement professionals in the world on how they use fitness as the gateway to their client's greatness. And that's who I am today. But like you alluded to, the journey to get to where I am today has been one of complete evolution and a beautiful culmination of trials and tribulation that really allowed me to find fitness for me as a way to feel empowered, right? So do you want me to get into a little bit of background then? Yes, please. Okay. So I grew up in north of Toronto in Canada, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, uh, in the Burbs, and where I grew up was a very Caucasian neighborhood. So I am half Japanese, half French. My father's Japanese. That's where the Tanaka comes from. And my mother is French Canadian. And it's such a beautiful duality. But growing up in the 80s, it was very challenging to navigate at the time. And I was severely bullied as a kid. Like, I'll never forget JK, grade one, grade three, grade seven, grade nine, all the way through. Right. And it was just one of the things that I had to deal with as a kid. And from a self-esteem perspective, you know, you can imagine, I mean, many children struggle with self-esteem and it was one of the challenges that I had, one of those skeletons in the closets. Right. And it wasn't until I had a boyfriend in high school that introduced me to the gym that things really shifted for me. I actually grew up as a figure skater um, soccer player. I was very, very active. You know, I wasn't the top star player or the figure skater, but I was always active. But there was something for me about getting into the gym that allowed me to zone out. And Crew Mel, you can totally relate to this, right? As a fighter, there is nothing like, it actually gives me goosebumps to think about it. There's nothing like stepping in the ring for a fight or that sparring session that you're just so present in the zone, right? So for me, weightlifting became that. It wasn't about the way I looked. It wasn't about the way I felt. It was literally what I speak about on my podcast, Meditation Through Motion. Getting connected to breath, 
getting connected to movement. And you know, very different, but very similar to weightlifting, that if you are not present to your opponent in the ring, you're going to get knocked out, right? If you are not present to your breath and movement while you're lifting weights, you're going to get, you're going to pass out. You're going to injure yourself, right? And so for me, you know, I started lifting when I was probably 15 years old, right? And by the time I was 18, I was in line to get a certification through ACE personal training as a trainer. I studied kinesiology in university. And this for me was almost a saving grace for me feeling insecure, me feeling like what value did I have to bring to the world? And so, you know, the story doesn't end there because it's always this layering effect of for me, this personal growth of learning self-worth and learning that I am enough. And fitness for me was really this tangible physicality of being able to day after day have a practice that grounded me, had a practice that empowered me, that had led me to look at kinesiology as a study of the biomechanics of the body, right? And I actually did a minor in psychology in university at York University in Toronto. And so you know, through the four years of degree, um, it really was about finding myself and using fitness as a way to empower myself. And I, by virtue of just doing the practices, even, you know, I thought I looked okay, right? But by the practices, I started powerlifting first year university with the um, strength and conditioning coach out of Arkansas University for their, foot, their uh, what's it called, their farm football team. And it hmm. was a different level, right? I'm 5'2", right? 135 pounds right now, but I was like rock hard solid. They used to call me the pit bull because I was like this short little, right? Rock hard fit, like deadlifting 300 pounds. It was like a spectacle wow. almost. <laughs> but for me, it was really getting centered. Like you talk about centering, right? Vibrational energy. It was really about that, that was able to support my mindset, my heart set, my body through university, right? So when I finished my kinesiology degree, you know, the conversation around what are you going to become with your life? I always saw fitness as a side hustle, right? So I went actually back to school after uh, kinesiology to study dental, dental hygiene. And so I was a dental hygienist for a decade. However, I was always a trainer, from 19. So my fitness journey literally started over 20 years ago, being a trainer. I was, I was a fit tester. And you probably remember this, Mal, being in Toronto for, at Premier Fitness, right? Back in the day, Premier Fitness. Um, John Cardillo? That's right. John Cardillo. That's exactly. Yeah. John Cardillo. The infamous John Cardillo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? Those right. of you in the fitness industry will know this name and maybe some of the mafioso stuff that was around that name, right? Especially right. being from Toronto. Um, yeah. And so I, I, while I was a dental hygienist for a decade, I did fitness. I, was a, I became a spin instructor. I became certified in gravity. I supported people opening up their gyms, really supporting people in feeling good in their bodies because I knew for me, it was this unbelievable access point to feeling great, right? And then there was a shift that happened. So I got married once before my current marriage and I was married in 2006. So I was 26 years old at the time and I was married to this lovely guy in Toronto um, However, he wasn't the right person for me, so I got divorced. And for those of you that are in challenging relationships or going through something like this, you know that when there is a decision made or a choice made like that to leave a marriage or get a divorce or get a separation, it fractures your world, right? And I've been through the bullying. I've been through lots of disappointment. I've been through... You know, I had to have a restraining order once against a boyfriend who hit me. So I've been through my fair share of uh, challenges. And when I got divorced, it was really, really hard. Coming from a Japanese background with a father that was quite strict with very high expectations, there was that air of, you know, how am I good enough as a daughter now? 
And then also, you know, so my father is Shinto Buddhist, my mother is Roman Catholic, but growing up, you know, we were brought up under Roman Catholicism. And I remember, so one of the things when you're Catholic to get married, you go for about a year with your priest and you do these classes about marriage. And I remember distinctly, Mel, the priest saying, you know, it's very important that you bring your family up in Catholicism. It's very important that you yourselves as a couple, that it's like the trilogy, you, your husband and God, right? And bec- and he made this reference and I'll never forget. He's like, because what will happen is that you're going to be down here roasting marshmallows being like, pass the marshmallows, meaning that I was going to be in hell if I didn't conform to all these things, which was really- Oh God. Right? So on a different level- oh, shit. Right. When you get divorced, you you all these identities of yourself as a daughter, a good daughter gets fractured, as a good Catholic gets fractured, as an individual who stood at the altar in front of God, in front of a priest saying, yes, I do forever, that now almost a year into the marriage saying, I actually don't, right? And so I share this, Mel, because that for me was one of the most challenging times of my life the most isolating time of your life, my, my life, right? You, in, you engage yourself and surround yourself with people that are in alignment with both husband and wife. Well, immediately you lose your friend circle. Immediately you lose your support structures. Immediately you're a disappointment on all aspects. And it was really challenging. And one of the things that I learned through that time was that I have control of how the outcome is hereafter. And that's when I really got even deeper into my meditation practice, into my self-development practice. And that is when I decided to compete in fitness. So I've competed three times as a fitness competitor um, because it was like it was, you know, when I played soccer, like it was when I first found fitness. Again, meditation through motion, a way to feel empowered, my temple to go inwards and breathe and focus and lift. And it became a way to be in the best shape of my life, but not as a rebound, like revenge, you know, those revenge shows like break up and have the best body of your life. It really was, how do I come back home to my temple? How do I feel good in my body? How do I feel like I get control back in a place that felt really out of control, right? Divorce is dark. Divorce is lonely, right? And, and you know, the first, the second fitness competition I stood on stage, I don't know if I have a picture here for you, I won first place at Fame, at Fame Federation. You probably remember Fame way back in the 90s. Of course. Right? I was there. There you go. You were there with me. I was um, there. There you go. And so the second competition, I won second place, or the third competition, I won second place. And it really was this new realization about thoughts become things. So let me give you just a perspective on this. And I often share this with my clients because this is why I got into the mindset space myself. Because we always think that visualization, or when we think of visualization, we can always relate to it how athletes train, right? Like I'll never forget some of the top athletes, like I think it was Michael Jordan when I first heard about it, was that he would sit and watch his replay videos, right? He would watch the replay videos and then visualize what was it that he did incorrectly in that and how could he change it and tweak it so that the next time it would be better. And this repetitiveness, right? And I learned this in kinesiology, right? Is able to rewire and pattern the way that you show up in your life. Mel, when I tell you that I was a winner before I stepped on stage winning that gold that day, because that's exactly what happened. Because every single time, and so those of you that have been in the fitness world know that it's so ridiculous. Like literally you would you put on these heels as a female fitness competitor and you have to practice walking with your physique, carrying yourself in a certain way, right? And I would go into the aerobics room with these heels on, with like, you know, your shortest shorts and your sports bra, and I would practice my walking because who the hell knows how to walk properly in heels? No woman ever, right? So you have to practice, right? And When I did that practice, and I'm of the firm belief that everything in life is practicable, that you can practice your way to your greatness with baby steps. And when I would practice my walk 
down this aisle, even with all the baggage of like being bullied as a kid, past trauma, just recently being divorced and like, what a fuck up I am, right? I would stand in that space of like, who do I want to be on stage today, right? And I would, pra- it actually gives me goosebumps saying this, I would practice like I'm the winner. I would practice every single day walking like I would win that medal. And, you know, something really magical happens when you embody the person you want to become, when you live through the lens of your, like you say, your desired state, right? We spoke about this the other day. It was that desired state that I was holding on to so much as a guiding light at the time when there was so much darkness. Like I would be at the gym at 5 a.m. even though I would work there. I was working full time as a dental hygienist. And then I would be back in the gym for either cardio session or weightlifting session in the evenings. Because at the time I had nothing else. I was single, not a mom, right? Working. And I was in this really dark place, right? And I knew I had a choice. And so the magical thing that really happened was leading up to these competitions, there was an ease there was a flow and there was a calm that would step in, right? Not that I'm like a superstar on stage. I actually really don't like being in front of stages or cameras, but there was something that occurred that as soon as I stepped on stage, I became that person I was practicing myself to be, right? And I won. And it was almost, you know, sometimes you have that feeling like, oh, I've got this. Not from a place of arrogance, but this place of being and knowing It was that. And that was a new chapter in my journey of becoming who I wanted to be, right? Of aligning myself with the desired states that I want so that I can really have the life that I dream of, right? And so it's been a long journey. Standing ovation. Well, and you know, you've been through your fair share of life's challenges, right? And I'm of the belief that these life challenges are really beautiful opportunities to learn new lessons that we can overcome, that we can gain resiliency through and get stronger, right? And so this is a brief overview. I mean, I'm happy to answer any questions to go deeper into some of the challenges, um, but that was... 13 years ago was the last time I stepped on stage. And what transpired probably, you know, no, was it 13 years ago? So whatever, 10, 13 years ago, yeah. And what transpired within a year of me stepping on stage and really creating this life of who I wanted to be, I met the love of my life, got married within six months, then I had two kids. And I have the life, my dream life, I really do. And so I always see it as a new opportunity every single day to say, okay, like you do with your beautiful vision boarding exercises and the vision boarding coaching that you give your clients to really look at, yes, we are so grateful for what we have now. And you get to choose every day the life that you want to live into. I'm ready to uh, call it a show, uh, Josh, uh, because uh, she said everything that needs to be said. Uh, Thank you very much for coming. Like really, You're welcome. This You're is, welcome. yeah. Like, I don't need to do anything today, Josh. I don't need to do anything. She just Josh, did the mic drop. I did. I'm good, man. Edwin, Edwin's on board too. Edwin's on board. <laughs> Queuing up the raid. Yeah, man. <laughs> I, I, I have to say, uh, to be fair, Catherine, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised of all of it. There's so much to unpack. First of all, you have a problem. You have a challenge in your life. The first thing that you should do is move your body. Because if you move that energy, then you can start clink clearing and, and, and thinking clearly. Hmm. If you move the body, let alone the science behind the brain releasing endorphins and that making you feel better. But this is, a, this is something that I preach every day. And it's why I say to people, if you are having a tough time, the first thing that you should do is move the body. Get yourself physically fit. Because as an expert, I'm sure that you'll agree, Catherine, that one of the beauties about watching people get in shape is actually not even watching their body change, but watching the physiological changes that come with it. Hallelujah, 100%. And, you know, and for those of you that are listening that – 
you know, are challenged by fighting motivation, it's one baby step, right? It's not saying you need to show up with Crew Mel for his hour-long wolf pack workout every single day. It's like, what can you do today that will support you? And the science is unequivocal, right? The mind leads the body, the body leads the mind, right? You show up, you move your body. Physiologically, like you said, things change. We sleep better. Studies show it improves anxiety and depression, right? It boosts your immune system. In a world now that a global pandemic is now a constant conversation, right? What is the best thing you can do? Keep your immune system up. Get outside, breathe. Get some vitamin D from the sun. Supplement it, whatever it is. Feel good in your body. And, you know, I'm having the opportunity in a couple of weeks, actually, to be on the Global Morning Show uh, in Canada's Global Morning Show in their segment wow. as a fitness expert. Yeah, I'm really excited. Wow, that's I'm, amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, But I'm speaking exactly about this, right? Because with the body positivity movement of people feeling really intimidated about what the fitness industry, as you know, Krumel, has, you know, pushed for years, the diet culture about how we look, beauty standards and um, contexts that really drive what people think they should be, right? But what we're talking about today is more than that. How do we want to feel in our bodies, right? How do we want to have improved brain clarity, improved energy for ourselves and our life, for our jobs, for our families, for those we love, right? This is exactly it. And it gets yourself out of your head, into your breath, into your body, into that place of feeling good and feeling good. If you feel that, like chase that feeling, that, that natural endorphin high, it's a win and it's a beautiful start. So, I mean, Catherine, let's let's talk about that one that perspective for a little bit. What about if you are feeling like, you know, you're lacking in motivation, or you know, because I'll tell you something. Everybody thinks uh, somebody said something to me this morning. I had a call at nine o'clock. I dropped off little Leo to daycare. I'm speaking mm -hmm. to this guy that I met yesterday on a on a. It was called a pub pub night, four o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, yeah. They just get these people together on Zoom and they call it a pub night, and they have one question. And if you go into breakout rooms and you talk a little bit about whatever the topic is. And of course, it just so happens that the universe has brought me here on a day that they're talking spirituality. spirituality. Shocking. Shocking. Nothing's a coincidence, my friends. Nothing is a coincidence. Right. But he said today, my friend, Catherine, he said to me something that's really positive because... Mm. Positive in the sense that he said, Mel, you want to know why it, the coaching space is so difficult? He says, because most people come onto this space thinking that they got it together. But a coach that can show his or her brokenness becomes real. Mm -hmm. Catherine, I'm battling with a little bit of motivation for fitness. You know why? Because mm -hmm. my body hurts from 25 years of getting punched and kicked and people kicking like horses and my tendonitis and the elbows, plantar fasciitis on the feet. My shoulders are bad. Mm, you feel me? You, I know yeah, you feel, I feel me. You. I feel you, babe. Yeah. So, you know, what do you say? Yeah. What is somebody, what is when a client comes to you, take me through it. I want to know because there's something that, listen, you talked about it earlier. You're going to say one thing, Somebody's going to be listening and they're going to say, holy shit balls. That's what I need. That's exactly what I needed to fucking hear was yeah. exactly what Catherine said. Well, I'm going to share two things, Mel, with you. The first is that I don't believe anything is a coincidence anymore. I believe that whether you believe in God or universe or source or whatever, I don't think anything is an error. And sometimes these the signs, Sorry. sometimes these signs our body gives us is, you know, this little reminder that we need to slow down. We need to take care of ourselves. I've been really hard on my body too, right? I played soccer. I would sprain an ankle and literally be back on the field the next two days, right? So bad that actually when I, when I still played when I was 19, 20 years old, no, maybe 21, 22, I sprained my ankle, right? You always think that you know better right? And I was like, oh, I'm an athlete, whatever, right? Sprained my ankle, was back on the field the following week, sprained it so bad, Mel, I couldn't walk for three months, okay? I didn't break anything, but it was such a brutal sprain, and it actually ended my soccer career, 
right? But I didn't listen, right? And so the second thing I want to share with you is, <laughs> you did say we we're going to get into it. So here we go. Let's do it, man. This is what I wanted. I wanted Catherine's heart in this. So fitness is my life. I strongly identify with a, as a Japanese Canadian mom, entrepreneur, that fitness is my life. And so Edwin's listening today, but he already knows the story. So, and Josh actually might know this story also. So three years ago, just over three years ago, April 18th, 1998, I think it was, or sorry, 2008. Um, I, Sorry, 2018. Oh my God, my my years. I tore my left glute. I used to love CrossFit, right? Like I used to love, love, love that energy, the pushing, right? Coming from the place of like being fitness competitor. I love that energy. I tore my left glute. High volume front squats. Pop. Okay. And yeah. And so you know, being a fighter, how many injuries you've probably had. And... It rocked my world at that time, right? I was in pain. We, we had a convention in Vegas, went to Vegas with my husband. I couldn't walk. I couldn't walk. And I was like, I don't know. Is it a co-? So they didn't know what it was at the time. They thought like I herniated a disc, da, da, da. After four months, one of the top sports med doctors in Toronto, Dr. Tony Gallia, God bless Tony Gallia, um, ultrasound. I'm my knee. buddy at his office. I got there you. There you go. Oh, I love, Yes. Yes. He's amazing. So Carm's the best. Carm's the best. Yes. So, uh, ultrasound on my glute, found the glute tear, but in the process, I was getting MRIs, all these things, x-rays. And this is what they found Mel, because you know, you can deal with a glute tear. So I have a grade two plus spondylolisthesis at my L5 S1 joint. So for those of you that don't understand physiology and anatomy, your vertebrae are stacked one on top of the other. So if you are either congenitally born without that piece of your vertebrae that links them all up beautifully together, or you've fractured it because of an injury, probably from soccer, flying, you know, doing one of those round kicks and landing on my backside, that part of my spine is missing. But what has happened is the vertebrae is now out of alignment completely out of alignment. So much so that the symptoms I was getting complete pain down my left side and nerve pain all the way down to my foot after that glute injury. So Tony Gallia believes that when I tore that glute, the force pulled on my spine and put it more out of alignment. And so what do you do as a busy mom, as a fitness professional who guides people in fitness that now is broken? Literally, guys, I am not able to run anymore. I can't lift the way that I used to. I can't do CrossFit, which I loved, right? Um, And, you know, I was literally in this position that I'm like, oh, my God. Like, how, what, where, how, how do you even move from here? What do you do, right? Who are, who am I in the world now not able to be strong and fit the way that I desire, to do the things that I see as a fitness fitness professional should be doing, Mm -hmm. right? The things that we should all over ourselves for. The leader by example. Yep, the leader by example. And it was yet another lesson that the universe is saying, slow the fuck down, Catherine. It's not about doing everything, right? And it's still a learning because it's over three years now. And guys, when I tell you I had to go to, down to like square one basics, I teach people this shit. And I was relearning it myself because of pain. And then how do you motivate yourself? Like you say, when you're in pain, when you're feeling like crap, when your body's hurting, right? Like I wake up with like this pain all down my left side to my foot, right? I, I have atrophy in my left leg, right? So now I'm in about like all these different things. And so this is what I would say to myself, just one step at a time. All we have is the present moment. All you can do is focus on now, just today, just one baby step. And to celebrate that. I, you know, I'm not great at celebrating myself, but I definitely am damn great at celebrating my clients, right? As a reminder that we need to celebrate ourselves. That little baby step 
right? Of you telling your wolf pack, guys, we're getting up at 6 a.m. And you being able to pull back and not go full tilt because I know, Mel, I know you're the same energy as me. Like I show up and if I'm doing a workout, I can't half ass it. But that inability to say yes to myself and put that boundary there because I want to make sure I'm doing it for everyone else screws me, right? And so in terms of motivation, it's just one thing. And the beauty of the coaching industry, I believe, and I speak about this on my podcast all the time, every great coach has a coach. Because sometimes, right, we are there, Mel, you know, you are there when your clients don't want to do it, don't want to get out of bed, every freaking excuse is there that can give them validity to say, no, I'm not going to show up. But you are there, you're like, I'm showing up, so you show up, right? And sometimes even the best coaches like yourself require also coaches, right? And so those of you that are struggling, find a buddy. You can always take the courage to share what you're struggling with and where, what is your desired state? Like you talked about, what is, what is your goal? And if that is your goal, I want you to support me and call me on it. Right. And then if you have the opportunity to find a mastermind, create a mastermind, people around you, like we are part of this beautiful group that Tuan pulled together four years ago, right. To say, okay, like these are my people. I need you to have a new listening for who I am. I'm that person that's going to be taking baby steps. And I'm of the belief, very similar to like I said before, practice makes progress. There's nothing balls to walls with my client. There's not about like, it's not about goals and success. Practice makes progress. And progress is the win for me, for all my clients. Because that's what it is. It's one foot in front of the other, right? I will never run again. But if I held on so tightly to what that is, I may never have a six pack again because metabolically I can't do that anymore right? But if I hold on so tightly to that vision of what I think it should be, is that where my happiness resides? No, right? And so for me, it's about baby steps every single day and practice makes progress. You know this, you know this, this is exactly what you guys do in Mutai, right? It's about the practice, right? Repetition is the mother of all skill. Amen. Right. So there it is on the screen there, Catherine. Practice makes progress. Yes, Putin Nation. He's good. He's, He's good. I Just actually good. I actually spoke about Putin Nation in uh, when I was in Quebec this summer with my kids because my kids had never really experienced real poutine. And so Josh, your name came up. I was like, you know, this is what Putin Nation is about. Canada's exactly. national food, poutine. Sorry. Look at that. <laughs> what is he write? What did he write? I can't even see it, bro. Something about gravy. Is that, it's, it's gravy? All, you all, it's all gravy. It's all, all gravy. Yes. <laughs> Essential educational experience on summer break. Exactly, Josh. Absolutely. Um, Catherine, I, I guess the, the truth is, is, is that it's, it's, it's interesting how similar we are. I, I really have to tell you that, you know, we've, we spend some time together, but of course, rarely do you ever get a chance and opportunity to sit for 90 minutes, you know? Mm-hmm. I just find it quite remarkable that how almost verbatim you say the stuff that I say. It's it's really quite remarkable um, um, because what you say is true. We we whatever example, whatever analogy, whatever uh, you know um, ways that you want to describe something, mm-hmm. you know, one foot in front of the other. A marathon is run by putting one foot in front of the other. It it, it doesn't matter the way you put it, but it's about the practice. And I feel that. I I feel that. I think that, I think that in my case, you know, Catherine, the difficulty is, is is it's, it's about the holding on. So I was 26 years old and I joked about with you, uh, joked with you about this, that I was 26 years old with a six pack. I didn't really have to say too much. I could just walk around and if I wanted to meet somebody, I would meet them. Take your shirt off and meet them. Take your shirt off, yeah, or just have them go, here, give me your hand for a minute, feel this. You know, they would have a laugh. Honestly, Uh, no. (laughs) Really, it was terrible. It was so cheesy, but it was, I had never had one before. I'd never never worked this hard in my life. Listen, I was running 72 kilometers a week. Yeah, yeah, yep. For most people, they don't run 72 kilometers in a year. Yeah. Some never 72 kilometers in their life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right, Josh. It was cheesy, <laughs> but it was effective. Um, 
<laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll say this to you, Catherine, that I, I love what you say, but I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with it. I'm struggling being, being 46 years old and, and feeling different about my body and, yeah. and feeling like it's not the same anymore. I well, here's the thing. Hmm. It's not the same anymore. And it's not. I know. After yeah. So one of the big awakenings after having children, because, you know, a lot of things about what happens to a woman's body is never really spoken about, which is bullshit because we need to talk about it more. Yeah. But it was a rude awakening. My body will never be the same, ever. doesn't matter what I do unless I re get my hips, like, surgically changed, right? It'll never be the same. Yeah. And this is where the self-acceptance, self-love comes in, Mel. And you know this. You know you can coach your clients through this. And you need to do the work also, right? Of course. Because it'll never be the same. And we need yeah. to love it as it is. And Tony Robbins always says this, and I always bring this quote up, right? Change your state and change your life. You know, right? You need yeah. to just show up differently, whether it's for your little Leo or just for yourself. You need to... Actually, there's no need. It's a beautiful opportunity to look at how do I want to feel and use what works, right? Like I know you are such an incredible dad. Put on that music so that you and Leo, Leo have a dance party too. That'll shift your physiology, right? Yep. Strap Leo yep. on your back. Go for a walk out in nature because I know you love it and your beautiful trails out there. Then you know you'll feel better. Layer, use that momentum, right? Because sometimes motivation is very fleeting right? And if you don't act immediately, it's gone. It's like that good espresso. You're like, oh, this is so good. And you're like, oh, it's done. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what an analogy. Well, I love it. But it's true. It's a good espresso. It's like, a, well, you know, like a good, well, you know, a good Italian espresso with a creme up top that you're you know like, I mean? oh, and hey. it's just, I'm such a coffee lover. And it's just delightful that you're like, oh, that's so good. And you're like, Oh my God. Yeah. It's one shot. It's freaking gone. It's gone. Right. But that's what it is. Motivation is fleeting. So don't wait for the motivation. Don't wait for the next inspiration. It's about practice. And this is what I remind my clients of all the time. These principles that we have, and that's why our con there's so many commonalities because the principles of movement are universal truths, right? Correct. Practice makes progress. Baby steps, one front in front of the other, right? Show up, keep mm -hmm. showing up. These things are are the practices that each and every one of us can put in place that become rote. It's like when you wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth. It's that practice of being able to brush your teeth right away, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a question anymore once you get that habit under your belt. And so sometimes it's putting the cart before the horse of saying, okay, what do I need to do that I know is going to guarantee I feel better? I'm going to hydrate. I'm going to watch less news. I'm going to get up and move. I'm going to play my favorite playlist. I'm going to get some fresh air. I'm going to socialize and get connected. Even if I have to physical distance, I can still be connected with others, right? Yeah. Whatever it is so that we can feel good. And you're doing the thing. You are creating this unbelievable community around you that supports you, that you show up for your wolf pack so that they can show up for yourself, themselves, right? And that's part of it. Truthfully, so during the pandemic, I lost every single fitness client of mine in the beginning, every single one. And I was in a bit of panic and I was like, what do I do? I used to run group classes in my studio, seeing clients one-on-one. -on -one. So I was like, okay, nobody wants to see me and nobody wants to do this. And so I, I shifted. I created an online membership studio where m kids could come. So I did kids fitness because I wanted my kids to see their friends. And I would run these classes awesome. every single day right? So that kids can move. We all need, know movement is better, especially in places of fear or of stress. We need to build our immune systems, change our state so we can feel better. And I didn't want to show up, Mel. I did not want to show up. I was pissed. I was upset. I was frustrated. I was like, what is going on? Right? And you know, you build your business up so much and then this happens and you're like, oh my gosh, now what? No kidding. But I showed up because that's what it's about. Even when I didn't want to, I would show up for them so they could show up for themselves. Even when no one showed up, I still would show up, right? And I would do the thing. I would do the recording for the membership site. Even when no one was there, I would do it myself. Like, hey, let's do it, right? And it's a practice. It's a practice of generating yourself. It's a practice of being your best self. It's a practice of becoming, right? And it's also a practice of 
forgiveness. Because some days when I'm feeling shitty, I share it, right? I'm like, I'm exhausted. I don't feel good. I didn't want to show up today, but I'm here for you. So we're going to bring our best because everything is incredible. You showing up and doing five minutes, you showing up and doing 50 minutes, you showing up and just breathing through it, right? You showing up and crying on a puddle on the floor, like that is part of it, right? And I think that we all need to be more gentle with ourselves and to accept where we are and create a new. It's a beautiful opportunity to create a new, right? Like we know that in Canada, we had a lot of forest fires this summer, right? Devastated people's homes, land. But we also know the cycle of life is that when things are destroyed, something new, bigger, brighter, better is born, right? And so this is what it's about. Focus on how you feel. Focus on those baby steps. Use those things that anchor you to shift your energy, music, friends, you know, watching some, watching a workout, right? Doing it with that person, whoever, the you know, and that's the beauty with COVID. It has opened up access in the fitness industry. You know, you can order a Peloton. It's at your door tomorrow. You're working out with somebody in New York and Chiang Mai and in Shanghai in two seconds, right? And it feels like this, like they're cheering you on. Yeah. You got this now. We can do it. We're going to go another 10 seconds. Let's go, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's and amazing. So, it's amazing. But I think wow. when people are struggling. Everybody needs to listen to this show, the, the, this show right here. Everybody needs to listen to Catherine Tanaka. Yeah. That's We should just call it the Catherine Tanaka show today because, wow, I feel inspired. I kind of want to go smash some things now, you know? Well, maybe, you know, one of the things for you, Mel, well, because I'm learning this for me, fit look, fitness looks very different for me now. And that's okay. Maybe it's not about smashing anymore. Yes, Muay Thai is a beautiful outlet, right? Yeah. Maybe it's something different. I don't know. You know what? It's funny Thanks. you say that because I got a, another one of our another one of our teammates, uh, Catherine, uh, in Albert Wong. Man, do I ever love that guy, Albert Wong? The best. <laughs> I call him King Wong. Um, he is teaching me tennis. Mm. So we've been having a blast doing some tennis. So good. And it's like so great. And he's so good. He's like a he's like a true tennis pro. 30 years of tennis. Really? Yeah, man. You should see this guy, Catherine, play tennis. That's amazing. So That's it's amazing. it's wonderful. And and I've 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 been very blessed that I've met some wonderful people. Rob Meredith, um, mm. who is part of the Wolf Pack, who uh, is not part of our mastermind, but is really just a, a, an amazing human mm. being. Um, and and this is it. This is you're absolutely right. You know, continuing to, uh, you know, take steps forward to react and and sort of move with that inspiration that you have mm -hmm. not to not to just let it go by but to 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 use that motivation and go for it right away don't hold back from it don't stop it yeah. keep that motivation going it, it's yeah. a very powerful thing you know I, I gotta tell you Catherine that there's so much to unpack here uh, I think that the idea of especially as we get on in age that things start to become different and I'll be very honest with you, Catherine, we talk about the eight most important pieces of the pizza pie in my vision board. And one of the most incredible things, and, and you know who did it for me, was Ute. Hakin Ute, man. She's the best. She just knows what to say, that lady. She sure does. Because I, and of course, jo Josh, uh, <laughs> Josh loves this uh, this story, but you talk about fitness and you talk about doing something when you were younger and how now that you're a little older, you can't do the same things. Well, you know, that's very powerful, Catherine, because it happens in all areas of our life. And I want to give you this example. So I was explaining to Ute, even on the show, about an experience I had once with a woman and how I had gone to this uh, um Egyptian ceremony uh, with, with this esoteric school that I was studying with. 
And I just came back and made love to this woman. And it was something that I had never experienced before. And here's the thing. Ute said, if you keep trying to re- invent this experience mm. all you're going to be doing is spinning your wheels because mm -hmm. it's it was meant for that moment in that mm -hmm. time you may get close to it you may you may pass it you may you may never get close to it again but don't try to relive it just continue mm -hmm. to move forward with what you're doing and and it's true it's true catherine because i feel that that what you said really transcends into all areas of our lives not just the, the the health and wellness pizza pie or or, or piece of the pizza pie mm -hmm. but that everything that we do and it's exactly that's a that. very yeah that's a very powerful lesson that's a very yeah. powerful lesson well it's really that present moment awareness right that we're not living on the past as experiences we can use past as proof of what we can do Right. But that present moment opportunity really allows any possibility to reside. Right. And I wanted to touch on one quick thing in regards to fitness, because fitness for me was soccer, figure skating, weightlifting. Right. And the fitness industry is very much about like get in the gym, lift weights. You know, Peloton is very much about like let's spin together. Right. Fitness doesn't have to be that. To be fit in your body, to feel good doesn't have to be that. It can be like you said tennis. It can be yoga. It can be dancing in forests naked on logs. Like it can be anything that really, it's true. Like gets yes. you connected to your body, to your yeah. breath. Right. And so, because a lot of people think like, you know, Catherine, I just can't imagine being in a gym. It doesn't have to be that. Right. You don't have to find a coach like me to support you in your fitness journey. It could be a walking coach, a running coach, a dancing coach, right. It can be pole dancing. It can be anything right? And for the men out there, it can be like learning to skip rope, learn, being a football coach for the local team or a baseball coach, right? There are so many ranges of moving your body, getting connected to your breath, to nature, to yourself that can support your health and well-being. It doesn't have to look the way that it looks for me or for yeah. Kumel. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. In fact, it's so funny. You can tell a real good coach when you hear stuff like that, because it's about the creativeness of what you said. I used to say with some of my, my coaches that they talked about food and talked about, you know, the challenges. And I said, well, you know what, how about if you went and did a cooking course? And they said, really? Well, yeah. Go and go and do a vegan cooking course because you want to become a vegan or go and do a vegetarian cooking class. Yep. And they said, wow, I never thought about that. Yeah, because when we get set in a particular way, in the, in the movement, in the frequencies in which we travel, in order for us to become creative, we have to do something different. Mm -hmm. It's the only way. Perfection is nothing more than constant evolution. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. what perfection is. If it's stagnant, it'll no. never be perfect. And so exactly what you said, it is imperfect. The perfection is in the imperfection of it all. Correct. Right? That's why some of the concepts, that's why I love the whole fitness thing being a universal. My, mm -hmm. my yoga teacher, uh, Sophia, used to always say, yoga is nothing more than finding comfort in the discomfort. Mm -hmm. It's all the same. Yeah. It's all the same. Yeah. You know, one of the things with having, you know, a minor in psychology that I often remind my clients about, if we forget, you know, psychology 101, is about classic conditioning, right? Pavlov was the um, psychologist that really gave birth to classic conditioning, right? Talking about, you know, when the dog would get food, there would be a bell rang and they would salivate, right? Of course, we salivate when we see food. But this conditioning, this habitual repetitiveness of that dog's life was as soon as a bell would ring, the body's physiological response to the bell would be salivating as though there was food, even in the absence of food. And I share this because it's one of the powerful things to be able to rewire our minds and say, huh, I have conditioned myself my entire life to not be a vegan or to not work out or to talk shitty to myself or to always think that negative things are going to happen or whatever it is, right? Or like, expecting chaos because chaos has always been my life, 
right? That we've conditioned that. It is a habit. Like we just think that this is our personalities and this is the way that we are. I challenge that because if you look at these models of choice theory, of classic conditioning, we have the opportunity to say, hang on a second, I've had 42 years of doing it this way, of having this mindset around this thing because I'm 42, whatever you are, right? This is an opportunity to say, hang on a sec, I can choose something differently. I can choose something differently today. We all know, if you've ever been on vacation, that when you go on vacation, you're like, You've never been brave to jump out of a plane. Okay, maybe that's extreme, but you've never been brave <laughs> to go, you know, snorkeling when your right. friends were like, let's go snorkeling together. But all of a sudden you show up on the white sand beaches of the Bahamas and your new lovely partner or that hot beach boy with no shirt and a six pack like Mallet 26 is for the female for those males that are listening, right? That are like, you know what? We're all going to go and we're going to go snorkeling. And that past you was scared shitless because you're like, no, 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 I can't. I'm not a good swimmer. You know, you have all these predisposed conditions of your life, these limiting beliefs. But now all of a sudden you're on vacation. You're like, yeah, yeah, I can do this. And you do it once, right? But that's all it takes, Mel, is the one time, the baby step that you're like, hang on, we have to remember these things. I've done it before. I can do it again right? And that is the opportunity. And remembering that there's always your body and your brain are going to resist that new thing that you're like, no, 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 I'm actually a brave person now. I'm courageous in the face of fear, right? It's this practice that we can get out of our conditions, right? I've seen women in their 50s lose 50 pounds. They've been heavy their entire lives. You've seen on Instagram and social media, people have lost like 300 pounds and kept it off right? That takes something. That is a day in and day out mindset work. I've had beautiful opportunities to interview some incredible people on my podcast that it's about that. I had a woman that has lost over a hundred pounds. She's now a mindset coach, right? And she looks at exactly this. She goes, Catherine, every day was just like showing up today. I just need to show up today. Just one more day, right? And then one more day turns into 365 days, turns into a lifestyle. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I, 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 I have to say I'm, I'm, I'm left a little bit speechless, Catherine, because I, I believe in all of these things that you're talking about. Um, and I believe so much of it that that there's nothing to add. That's the beauty. There's really nothing to add to anything that you're saying, because what you're saying is 100% truth. Because at the end of the day, what I do is I try to take it a step further when, when we talk about the clarity coaching stuff and say, look, mm -hmm. that self-love piece that we're talking about, we're talking about it from the body part. Then mm -hmm. we talk about how it transcends into the mind and the spirit. Well, I say that if we're going to talk about balance and we're going to exercise all three points of the, tri of the triangle of body, mind, and spirit – then what we start to develop is something called awareness. And what most people, I don't know whether or not they, they, they think about it consciously or not, is there's only two kinds of awareness. Awareness of the energies of self and the energies outside of self. Mm -hmm. And so as you start to give yourself love and that self-love piece becomes an important part of your life, you start to change vibrational frequencies. And in changing the vibrational frequencies, here's what happens. You start feeling energy that you didn't feel before. You're not affected by the emotions that triggered you when you were at a lower frequency. So I always use the example, Catherine, of radio stations. And I'm a mm. Toronto boy, so I use Toronto radio stations. You're at 99.9 and you're, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're vibrating at 99.9. As you give that self-peace, as you take all the advice that Catherine has told you today and you start loving yourself, because you know you're worth it. Mm -hmm. You start to change this vibrational frequency and then other superpowers start to emerge. Other energies start to emerge. And that's why there's really nothing to add to what you said, especially on that front, because everything you said is bang on. We talk, me and Josh, about putting clips together. The whole, Josh, this whole thing is a clip. 
The whole show's a clip. I can't I can't break it down into pieces, Josh, because this is awesome. This is awesome. So let, let me touch on that for one second. You know, Please. so part of what I support my clients, whether it's one-on-one -on -one in accountability coaching or inside my online transformation program, is mindset is the big piece. And part of the mindset is morning affirmations. And I remember just yesterday we had our group call, call and one of the girls is like, oh, I'm so glad that, you know, this stuff is not about affirmations. And I actually said, actually, you don't know that just yet. However, the way that I do affirmations for my clients is a little different. In my Mindset podcast series, I, I interviewed this woman by the name of Brenda Johnson. And she is used to be a fitness competitor. That's how I connected with her. And now she's in the mindset space, but she uses hypnotherapy in mindset. And the interesting thing that we spoke about in affirmations was that oftentimes in affirmations like, I am great, I am beautiful, I am da 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 doesn't necessarily land in your subconscious the way that we would desire them to, right? However, she says, if you use the verbiage, I am the type of person who is able to show up for myself every day. I am the type of person who can choose to nourish my body with one good meal a day. I am the type of person who can line up eight glasses of water a day so that I know that they're there so I can drink more today. I am the type of person who can go for a 20-minute walk with my favorite music because I know that'll get me going. I am the type of person who can connect with some, one person that will make me feel uplifted, that will shift my frequency, right? Using the words, I'm the type of person who makes us feel like, even if you say that to yourself, like I'm that type and you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm that type of person. I'm that type of person that can practice today. Right. I'm that type of person that can look at a baby step. I'm that type of person, you know, and then it allows you to gently welcome in a different conversation that allows you to layer upon that mindset. I'm very much about practice makes progress. And that practice is a continuous way to build a habit. And what happens when you layer habit upon habit upon habit, we create mastery right? And that's how we become the masters of our lives. This is how every single day we can show up and expand and expand. And I'm of the belief, and I share this with my clients all the time. Yes, I've done this for 20 years. And I'm just this much ahead of you. I don't have it all figured out. I hire coaches for myself all the time. I'm always expanding my knowledge, my understanding, so that my growth factor is farther. And that quantum shift that I am committed to for myself, I know allows my clients to also shift to, to that extent. Okay, there's a clip. <laughs> there's we a got clip. One. I got Thank one. Thank God. We got one. <laughs> it's perfect. Mastery. I talked about it today. There's a there's a woman on the show uh, with us today. Her name is Sandra Mio. Mm. And, and I don't know. Sandra, who, she's so sweet, Sandra. Sandra is an amazing, amazing human being. I call her a saint. I think she's a oh, saint. Saint she's, Sandra. Saint Sandra. She's a, an amazing woman. But you know, we were talking about uh, uh, this before about mastery. And for me, you know, th by doing this stuff and incorporating the stuff that you're talking about. You create this ability. And I love how you explained it in terms of habits and behaviors. So if you, as you layer the habits, you, you develop more of everything, love, self-confidence, compassion, empathy, emotional intelligence. And then, you start, and then you start to develop mastery because mastery for me is really in the axiom of choice theory, that we're an internal control system and therefore we should not let the external psychology affect the internal. But how does one do that? Well, you got it. By layering habits. Mm -hmm. By mm -hmm. taking step by step little things that you can do to improve. Because we know what makes us good. I always I always loved that when fighters used to come to me, Catherine, they used to say, okay, crew, so like, what should I eat? But listen, you got to lose weight for your fight. You have to be at a certain weight. Do I need to tell you that cheeseburgers and French fries really aren't going to do it for you? No. <laughs> so then let's just put some basic rules in place. So without, because I'm not a nutritionist, so I said, look, here's what I do. I do no carbs after 3.30 and I do no eating after 7.30. That's it. It's so funny because these guys are all coming out with, with uh, what's it called? Uh, um, intermittent fasting. We've been doing intermittent fasting 
since the dawn of time. Yes, yes. You know, so, but I love, I love what, I love the way you put that. I really am going to use that. That's really quite remarkable. Thank you for, for sharing that, Catherine. Thank you. Yeah. Very beautiful. You're welcome. So I'll share this because I know a lot of your viewers are potentially men, right? And I always use this analogy, so I'll give you some insight. So my father, the reason why my Japanese father ended up in Canada was because in Japan, there's this university called Toyopet. Toyopet is the university that actually trains all the mechanics for Toyota. So my father came in the 70s with two or three of his Japanese buddies to start one of the first Toyotas in Toronto. And he, so that's why he ended up here. So my father's been a mechanic for over 40 years. And so- as a daughter of a mechanic, a Japanese mechanic, I loved cars, right? Like I love cars. I love driving. I love cars. I think cars are sexy. Like I love cars, right? And so I always use this analogy with my clients and, you know, 95% of my clients are female. So it never really lands on them, but I'll share this with you and your audience because I think that people can get the analogy. Think about the Ferrari, or the Bugatti, whatever your most beautiful car is, right? Ferrari, growing up in the 80s, has always been the quintessential, unbelievable car, right? The curves, the line, the engine, the sound, the interior, the feeling, the smell. I've never owned a Ferrari, but I've been in a Ferrari, right? There is something so pristine about a Ferrari, right? You would never drive it in the salty snow. You would never drive it in the rain. If it got rained on, you would like wipe it down right? You would never put shitty oil in it, right? You would go to like the Ferrari dealership to do the oil change, right? White gloves, like don't fucking put fingerprints on my Ferrari. You would never put poor, like low octane in that Ferrari because you want it to work, right? Hum when it drives, like high octane fuel, right? The best of the best. Most people will never own a Ferrari in their lifetime. We're okay with that. But I always remind my clients that one of the best performing vehicles that they own already is themselves. Your body is your Ferrari. Your body is your temple, right? Of course. And so we need to learn to fuel it well so that it works well. We need to learn to care for it well, speak to it. Like we love it, that gorgeous body of ours, right? Even when it doesn't look like the Ferrari because we come in all shapes and sizes and colors and magnificence in our own way, right? And so if we can embody and remember that our temple, our bodies are that Ferrari for ourselves, this unbelievable vehicle that gets to carry us through lives and trials and tribulations and has this unbelievable resiliency, fuel it well, move it well. Like you need to take that Ferrari to the track and drive it because it is meant to be driven just like your body. You need to move it, right? And so I really believe this analogy of a Ferrari is one that I love. So whether it's like Louis Vuitton shoes or Louis Vuitton bags or whatever is your jam, uh, yeah, I, I love that analogy. So care for your temple. Use your vehicle. So we used, we used the same one in, in Muay Thai. We used the Ferrari, Say, the same one. Like, I, I don't know I what to that say. That's crazy. No, we use the same one with the Ferrari because the Ferrari is the quintessential of, of automobiles. And, and of course, we used to say that we used to, I used to use the, it was the exact car, Catherine, the exact same thing because it's about the best. Mm. And for you, you have to believe in your heart of hearts that you're a Ferrari mm -hmm. because the truth is, is you are. Mm hmm. We just forget. Yes. That's why I always give this wonderful analogy myself about one of the basics courses, Catherine, in, in the, the world of metaphysics is called Empower Thyself. And when I used to teach it, one of the things was to plant the seed that you are a god and you are a goddess. How do you do that? Mm -hmm. So somebody gave me the analogy of an apple pie. So I said, okay, well, you like apple. Do you like apple pie, Catherine? I do. I love apple pie. There you go. So we're in apple season, so it's perfect for the time. So I'm going to put a piece of apple pie here, and you're going to eat this apple pie, Catherine. And then, you know, this is going to be an hour after I cut the piece. You're going to go and you eat this apple pie, and an hour later, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say to you, Catherine, what does that piece of apple pie taste like? And most likely you're going to say, well, duh, Mel, it tastes like an apple pie. And I'm going to say, why? 
And I'm going to say, and you're going to say, well, what a stupid question. But it's because it comes from an apple pie. And I'm going to say, good. Because if you come from some sort of God, then what mm. makes you think that you don't have the God stuff in you? Mm. Oh, that's so beautiful. Mm. That's true. And that's the Ferrari. And that's, and that's the Ferrari. The Ferrari. So, yeah. Catherine, in terms of your work now, I mean, mm. certainly we, the fitness industry was was hit hard. So you've done this online stuff. Tell us, first of all, you know, what, what are you up to? I mean, aside from this global morning thing, what's a day in the life of Catherine? What are you doing these days? Yeah, so I, I wake up in the morning. I'm currently training clients out of my garage. And I train clients at 6 a.m. So I have clients from 6 a.m. till about noon. Uh, I run a daily live Zoom workout for my members, my online members, where we do every single day a different kind of workout uh, that layers upon each other week after week for strength and conditioning and metabolic conditioning. Um, and then I have my transformation program. That's a hundred days that we, I run three times a year. And then I have my podcast that I get to chat with lovely people like you, right? Even though this is your show today, um, about what it is to feel our best and her, to, to be our best. And, you know, one of the, I'll share this with you, Mel, and it's, it's just in its inception. One of the things that I would love to do with the fitness space is to be able to give back. I'm so grateful for the clients that I have and I'm able to transform their lives. But for me, it's about impact. For me, it's about how do I give back to those that need it the most? Fitness was a saving grace for me. Honestly, if it wasn't for that boyfriend, Tanner in grade nine, that brought me to the gym, I don't know what it would have become, right? It was really an unbelievable way for me to, to discover who I am, right? And how I can change people and support people and serve people. And so one of the, and Edwin knows about this, and one of the things that one of my missions is to really give increased access to kids, um, fitness, accessibility, right? Inclusion, diversity, because the truth is fitness has become very expensive, right? Those that can afford a $5,000 Peloton with monthly memberships is not everybody, right? But how do we make sure no one is left behind, right? And especially kids, because for me, being able to play soccer as a kid was super empowering. Being able to be part of a team, as you know, right, is really empowering. And being able to be responsible for myself and to create my own destiny, my own life is very empowering, right? And so part of, yes, running my business is all of that, but I want to lead by example and leave a legacy for my kids to say, you know what, if mom can do that, so can I. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Right in the right in the feels. Right in the feels, Catherine. So, I, I mean, Catherine, we have your your stuff out. You know, uh, in terms of where people can 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 uh, sort of get a hold of you. But mm. you know, so this this, for example, this daily um, this daily workout that you're doing, uh, what platform is it done on? On Zoom. So you're doing it on Zoom, so they have to be a, a member to to access it? Yep. But I do have a YouTube channel, so you can always – there are some free workouts on there. Just easy to do, easy to follow. All you, They're all at-home workouts, so you can definitely do them from home, right? So that's an easy way to access that. Yep. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And you do you have a Twitch channel too now? Yeah, so I, I did have a Twitch channel um, – probably about a month or so ago, I kind of stopped streaming. I had really troubles with OBS. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there should be some workouts on there still, I think. So there's a whole library of workouts there um, from all our workouts from, you know, posterior chain day, from core and arms day, from glutes and abs day uh, to full body workouts and mobility workouts. So definitely you can find me on Twitch, katherinetanaka.com or katherinetanaka.fit, I believe it is. Um, so yeah, absolutely. It's all there. Yeah, your Twitch channel is here. This is yeah. awesome. And, and so is there, is there something coming up outside of sort of a, a, a you know, what you were discussing earlier? Uh, you're going to be on Global Morning? Yeah. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. amazing. Wow. Yeah. So I get to chat with Carolyn and Jeff. So that is 9 a.m. Yeah. Eastern Standard Time uh, on the Global Morning Show. 
lovely. Yeah. And what what else? What else is 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 going on? Is there something else there? When is the Body Project podcast going to be back up and running? And uh, sort of what's what's happening with that? Yeah. So I just actually did a series with Edwin Frandozo, Edwin 100X, talking about his 100 day epics, which has been amazing. And it just kind of aligned because I started. So my online program used to be a six week program that was really great. But what I found, Mel, was that people would come, go full tilt for six weeks and then fall off. Right. And so I needed, right. I needed to switch the conversation because I want to, and I think you said this too, like I want to support people and then release them so that they have the capacity to do it on their own. Right. But one of the things that I was finding is that they do everything for six weeks and then all of a sudden they would fall off. So I shifted the conversation and made it a hundred days because this is really our, the possibility of practice makes progress, progress layering into habits, habits to mastery. And so I started running my 100-day program around the time that Edwin declared his 100x goal in his in Slingshot VoIP, his tech business. And that so we just did a series talking about what can 100 days make available? What is mastery? How do we create support for ourselves? So yes, um, yeah. So that, that was the most recent episode. I'm actually going to share this episode with my uh, listeners, with my viewers, because I think whatever can support the conversation around how do we improve ourselves today, how can we support ourselves to be our best version, um, is the best thing that we can do. So yes, the Body Project podcast is going to be releasing more series than weekly shows. Uh, in the pipeline, I'm going to be sitting down with DJ and incredible yogi, uh, and EFT practitioner, Carmelina Damano, who is a Toronto DJ. I don't know if you know Carm. She's outstanding. Yeah. Um, and she's very good friends with uh, Zark Fata. You might know, you know, the Toronto circles. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to be sitting down and talking about breath work and tapping with her in a series, an upcoming series. Uh, and then the world is the oyster. I'm also almost completed my CBT meets fitness uh, certification, yet another certification, but this one I really love. So it's, what is um, this? yeah, so it's cognitive behavioral ther- therapy meets fitness. So it was created by Jill Bunny. So I interviewed Jill Bunny probably about a year and a half ago now, and she is a fitness competitor. She's competed on the Arnold stages, won world-class physique, and she has always struggled with body dysmorphia, body image, how, um, Uh, what's it called? Eating disorders. And so she started studying to be a CBD therapist. She's actually en route to do her PhD in uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. And so she created this program to really use the fundamentals and the principles from cognitive behavioral therapy and inject it into fitness, right? And so she created the certification that I'm almost completed so I can coach that program also. But it is just another opportunity for me to get a little deeper with my clients. Right. And so I will be doing a podcast with her talking specifically about how this aspect in fitness is really important for fitness professionals, especially with the important conversation around body positivity to support our clients in the best way. Right. How do we shift diet culture, which a lot of us are ingrained into? Like, look at the fight world. We have to, you have to weigh in a certain weight. Right. Like, I had a friend in high school who was a fighter, and he used to tell me he would put like a sweatsuit on and sit in a sauna for hours before weigh in. Yep. How is this even healthy? Right. So, we need oh, to, it's only- not healthy. That's no. for sure. Right. So it's, but it's, it's just one of the microcosms of the entire conversation. Right. And so the, this conversation on that segment will really be about how do we sif- shift the conversation and shake up the norms that women and men live into about how we should be, should look, should act, whatever it is. Right. Wow. That's very interesting. Mm-hmm. And when is that show going to be, uh, when is that uh, sort of podcast going to happen? So that's probably going to be in November, that one. Uh, at the end of the month, we're going to have Carmelina DeMano in that series. And so, yeah, there's there's a little series coming up in the pipeline. That's amazing. What amazing yeah. stuff. I want to give a shout out uh, to, uh, let me see who it is, to Casano Vayek. I hope I'm pronouncing that right for the raid. Thank you so much for the raid. Awesome to have all of your guests here on the Coffee and Biscotti Show. We are talking with fitness, nutrition, mindset coach Catherine Tanaka today and 
what an absolute joy you are. You really are a ray of sunshine. Oh, you're so uh, sweet. Thank you, Putin Nation, Casanova IQ. <laughs> Thanks, brother. I was reading it on a text going, I don't know what to call this person. Well, that's good. Casanova IQ. Um, there you thank go. you again. Um, but, but Catherine, you know, I, I have to say, I, I call you a ray of sunshine because everybody needs to hear this. Everybody needs to hear what you said today. No matter mm. where you are, no matter how shit you think your life really is, mm. there is something that they could take from you today that would fill their heart. You have said such, said such powerful things over the course of 90 minutes, which, by the way, if you can believe it, is almost at 90 minutes already. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, Crazy. But you've said so many powerful things that I know that somewhere around the world, somebody's going to watch this and is going to say, yeah, I need to, I need to take some baby steps. In fact, today I was talking to somebody. I did a lot of talking this morning <laughs> for some reason before the show. Usually Friday morning's dead for me, but mm. this morning I was busy and there's a, a, an old student who called me that talked about uh, her brother-in-law that is suicidal. Mm. And some of the things that have to happen so that she, like some of the things that she wants to do to help. So she set up a GoFundMe page. So if you're on my Facebook, uh, she tagged me in it so you can go and take a look at it. Um, but just that there's, there's so much of this. There's so much of this, you know, the world is in a toilet and everybody's like struggling and we need to, you know, everybody's talking about what it is that they need to do. You know what they need to do? They need to listen to Catherine Tanaka. That's what they need to do. They need to really just start getting into the habit, mm -hmm. the habit of moving the body mm -hmm. and then rewarding yourself because you did it and feeling good about the fact that you did something that was positive because the philosophy that I subscribe to has always been my entire life that I want to be better than I was yesterday. Yep. And that I want to leave this planet a little better than when I found it. I love that. And you, uh, Catherine, are the true embodiment, a true goddess. Um, you really do embrace your goddessness. And, and I, I really love that because, you know, some people not may not agree with me, but, you know, we used to talk about, Catherine, in metaphysical school about how men have been running the world and we've lived in such a matriarchal society for so many years. But if you go mm. back, if you go back to the times of, of, of uh, Egyptian civilization, it was actually the women who were in charge yeah. and the women who had a, a better balance as to the, the power between men and women. Mm. And we also said that women probably wouldn't make any guns. Probably not. And, and yeah. so to have someone like you come and, shine your light to all those that are watching and to shine your light to your clients, to your communities, and especially to your family. Because, you know, we used to say that we don't own our kids. We're just their first teachers. Yeah. Or maybe they're our best teachers. Right. Yeah. And, and, and sorry, just before you say that, just to say, just to say that I'm, I'm super grateful that you mm. came to shine your light. You really are such an amazing human being. And so you, I want the females to 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 look at this and go, wow, this is what it means to embrace goddess energy, that you're sharing that divine feminine goddess energy and in, sh in sharing it in a way mm -hmm. that brings passion. And that's why I created this show. You're the exact reason why I created the show. I love it so much, Mal. Thank you so much for having me. And I just wanted to speak about that light Please. for one second. Yeah. Please take your time. We're not on any time clock here. So one of the things that I always speak about on my podcast is that, you know, coaches have this beautiful opportunity to be the knowledge and guidance and the beacon for people to use as their North Star, right? One of the things that I know you do so beautifully, Mal, with your vision board workshops is to help people that are in darkness, those that are struggling with anxiety, depression, maybe even suicide, God bless these people, right? To 
be able to find their own light. What is their beacon in their life? Right. And I know, you know, I haven't gone through your vision boarding workshop, but I've heard people that have, and you've spoken about what you do. And I know for certain that even that is an opportunity to step into who you want to become, right? That opportunity that we as busy, crazy people that are hustling, especially in this side of the world, right? We never pause to say, what do I really desire, right? What is that desired state that I want to feel, right? Coming out of a year of crazy, coming out of a life that could be chaotic or busy or overwhelming, right? We always have the opportunity to pause. And, you know, for those of you listening today or here after on the replay, Coach Mel is an incredible source of power. You are a beacon of guidance and knowledge. And having access to you through like your vision boarding workshop is really a powerful place to start right? So yes, you can listen to this a thousand times, but often, and we know this being movement professionals, getting out in the field and playing the game of life, taking action is really important, right? So sometimes you need that accountability and being like, Krumel, I'm showing up to your workshop, like giddy up, let's do it, right? To give you that one step forward that you can start saying, okay, I'm going to hydrate today okay, I'm going to go for a walk today. Okay, I'm going to join the wolf pack today. Okay, maybe I'll jump on a workout with Catherine today. Maybe I'll jump on, you know, do 100x, you know, Cafe 100 with Edwin Frondozo because I need some accountability with my work, for example, right? There's always an opportunity, but I think that when people listen to conversations like this, I always wonder, you know, or I always encourage people to ask the question, what action can I take from learning what I learned today? Holy shit. Right? Holy shit. I love this. I love this whole sitting in front and being a host for a show, especially when I got somebody like you, Catherine. You make it so easy. You're I so really sweet. don't have to I don't have to do anything. This is like the easiest show to do when I've got somebody <laughs> like you. See, Josh knows what it's at. He he understands. Right? Yeah, he certainly does. Yeah. Um what can I say, girl? I'm I'm super honored to have you this was a long time coming and yeah. i'm happy that we got it to work getting five minutes with Catherine tanaka is not easy so i'm honored that i got 90 uh, and plus i go. get to look at your your ray of sunshine face Ooh. for 90 minutes there you go. and so what and a, you know what I, a moment. yeah thank you and i encourage your community right like the beauty of twitch is that people can interact and people can jump on every week with you and say hey mel you know that conversation about you know showing up, I showed up today, right? And today I'm going to do this, right? Like use this, even this platform as even an opportunity to say, hey, you know, I'm doing one foot in front of the other, right? And that's what yes, it's about. You when yes, is your you next are. vision boarding workshop, No, October 27th, Wednesday, October 27th, 7.30 p.m. The, the Chorus Life Vision Board Workshop. I love that. Okay, giddy up. I think giddy that up. everybody listening to this should be, registered for that and bring one friend bring one friend it's, and it's free and and it's free which is ridiculous we need to talk about that because <laughs> anyways that's a different conversation that's a different um, conversation but i think that you know I, I will put the link when when i reproduce this into a podcast for my show i will put Thank the you. link so that everyone can jump on for that and listening awesome. to that conversation and uh and i'm excited i will be there i will be there and i will bring people and I will, we will do the thing. Discord We will life. do the thing, baby. We will do the thing. We will yes, and I, and I hope that there's something that, that's said even in the workshop, even for you. Because like you said, every, every, every successful athlete, every successful coach has a coach. So I hope that there's something and there's a way that I can be of service to you. Mm, you're so sweet. Yes. Thank you, Mel. This was lovely. It was lovely to chat with you and to, Thank you know, you. gain some insight from what you even struggle with. Right. Um, because because we all do. And like you said, those that can lead the best are those that lead with heart centered and share vulnerably and share authentically so that people can be in alignment with that so that they can show up their best selves as well. 100 percent. Well said. So what I'll do now, uh, Catherine, is I'm just going to put you into the green room, as they call it. 
the green room. And uh, what we'll do is uh, I will give my final thoughts and then I will come back and sort of uh, follow up with you. But uh, from all of us, uh, of course, that being uh, my friend Clyde out in the Philippines, uh, Putin Nation, and this, the rest of us here at the Coffee and Biscotti Show, what an absolute honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm grateful. Thank you so much. Um, I don't really have much to say. You know, I give these final thoughts with the, with the, with the, purpose of leaving you with with some of the takeaways of today. I don't have much to say because there's just too many. There's just too many takeaways. I mean, I, I, what 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 an absolutely incredible human being. Like she needs to know, and I know she knows, but she needs to know what an incredible human being she is. I mean, how could you not I mean, I said to her the other day, guys, I'm going to share this with you because I think it's really funny. Like God could have been a little bit more fair and like sort of separated a little bit all the beauty that all this, like this one girl got. And not only, not only what, but does she have all of this beauty because she's, she's a 12 out of 10. Uh, but not only that, but she's just, she's all heart. That's what I'm looking for. That's what this show's about. And if you know somebody, that's all heart. They need to be here on the Coffee and Biscotti show. Which takes us to the portion of the show where we talk about next week's guest. You've heard of Dwayne The Rock Johnson? Well, his uncle, Ricky Johnson, will be on the show next week. He's a legendary wrestler who uh, has wrestled with some of the world's greatest back in the day. And like I said, he's the uncle of the famous Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So The Rock, I'm tagging you in my post because it would be a pleasure, Rock, to have you come to the Coffee and Biscotti Show to say hello to your uncle. Um, to all of you that are here, all of the new friends, uh, all that came in with the raid, Casanova IQ, thank you for the raid. Thank you for bringing your community and introducing them to the Coffee and Biscotti Show. Um, as always, we will be here next week, Friday, 12 p.m. EST. Look forward to seeing you there. And for all of us here in Canada, wherever you are, from my heart to yours, have a happy Thanksgiving. Josh, where are we rating to today, my friend? Let us know where we're going to take this group and we're going to make them enjoy something. Josh, rate right away, my friend, rate right away and enjoy either some music or where are we doing it? Today we are headed off to see a great MC at Colonel, oh, it's almost like Crumel, Colonel MC, and join in on at Bub Cave. Another awesome DJ's birthday festivities. There you have it, folks. That's where we're headed. Stick around. We will see you next week on the Coffee and Biscotti Show. Peace.